2019 edition of Venture Ventures. It's been a while, and it's episode 19. I planned this the whole time, uh, and we have some new faces here. Um, let's get what, to... What are you talking about? No, that's Justin and Catherine. Oh, yeah, that's true. They, they just must... look different. Yeah, they got some magic. I just had the surgery just now. It's great, right? <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> um, let's get straight to the intros so you know who you're looking at. Uh, we'll start with Dave. Go ahead and uh, tell us anything you want to plug and stuff like that. Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Dave Roderick. Uh, my character is a Kenku warlock named Prodding Rod, and I go by Proddy. Yeah. <laughs> Nailed it. Uh, <laughs> Richard. Hi, I'm Richard Cardenas. Uh, I play Niolus Nymerith. He is a Triton sorcerer, and nobody likes him right now, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> and what do I want to plug? Uh, I will plug my two podcasts. I have Awkward Human Survival Guide, uh, which uh, is new almost every week. And then I also have Interview with the Nerd. So check those out. Yay. Ryan. Hey, my name is Ryan Omega. I am playing a human uh, pig farmer warlock. <laughs> named Orson Ooh, Ambers. fellow warlock. Nice. And... Yes, and uh, you can catch me on um, a YouTube series called Dacian Brats, which is a D&D homebrew, where I'm playing a 10-year-old um, school kid that's kind of evil. And mm. then I also have a podcast called Life Action Roleplay, a LARP podcast, and we just crossed 10,000 downloads. Cool. Ooh. Congrats. Thank you. Uh, Lex? Uh, hi, I'm Lex. I'm playing a mouse folk named Ashwin, who's a fighter. Um, <laughs> you can get me on uh, Twitter at ItBeLex or on Instagram at um, it's period underscore period Lex. And sometimes on Ryan's podcast. Yes. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. I'm Jake Friday. I, I will be your DM here in this D&D 5e campaign of the homebrew world of Exoros. I apologize to the podcast listeners. I'm using the old microphone uh, that you haven't heard in a while because I'm house-sitting. That will not be the case next week, so bear with me. Also, there's two canines around who uh, <laughs> one is sleeping right now. He's a 90-pound um, Victorian bulldog, <laughs> so he, oh. should, he should sleep well. for a while. But um, we have another dog here that uh, could... She likes to bark and keep an eye on things, so... <laughs> uh, I apologize if that happens. Um, previously, let's go ahead and get into episode 19. I titled it Blarney at the end of episode 18 because of Blarney, who you found in the house you were given. Uh, but I don't know that Blarney's going to... Uh, I just realized I forgot to change the episode title is what I'm trying to say. So, um, so let's get into it. Previously on Venture Ventures, uh, the Big Bedfellows uh, were investigating for quite a long time a hag coven in the Gid Ward of Inista. I and... like how it's now like quite a long time. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, listening back to the podcast, I was pretty uh, um, nice about about not pushing you guys for a while there. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, Too nice. Yeah, One no. Nice. I would say that. <laughs> anyway, so um, they uh, the big bedfellows stumbled into some time travel, found out the hags. Uh, there were hags in the Gidward, which is an orphanage center of the city, and uh, they were running these orphanages, and uh, Nihilus's sister um, had a run-in with them. That uh, bitch. Jeez, and <laughs> um, she uh, she uh, you know told uh, Nihilus what was happening, and they eventually made it back to their current their correct time period, and had been rooting around in the city trying to figure out a way to defeat these hags. Eventually, they decided to do it uh, with the help of a slip and a slide down underneath the orphanage and fought a coven beast which was uh, two out of the three hags had kind of uh, Bill and Ted's adventure. Uh, if you remember the creature station, they kind of melded together and that formed the coven beast and they defeated them. Uh, and uh, that was 
uh, the end of the adventure for the most part and receive some stuff, as you do. Some thanks from the city. Speaking of which, I told you you would get a title from the Wardens of Anista, and you do. So about, you guys um, are a couple days into, uh, after our last episode, uh, Prady and Nihilus, and um, a, uh, a secretary of the Wardens uh, finds you guys and gives you these scrolls that essentially uh, award you the title of uh, Warden of the Gidward, and uh, it comes with a little badge in case you need to flash it anywhere in the city. And uh, a few days after that, there's a note left in the inn where you're staying, um, and all of you stay in the same bed as big bedfellows do. Mm-hmm. Standard. And, and um, <laughs> Aradia um, is not there in the morning one of the days, and there's a note on uh, <gasps> the table. And oh. I will do my best Aradia impression now. Uh oh. <laughs> big bedfellows, do not <laughs> go into the basement. I'm not kidding. This isn't a funny, fun thing. There are a lot of weird-smelling smells coming out of this book, and I have to investigate. Honestly, my big bedfellows, I feel so lucky to have found you before... (laughs) How am I doing? Before we... Terrific. Before we met, I can't say that I had actual live talking friends, really. So it feels a bit like... We're at the the altar about to get married, and then my zombie fiancé that I thought was dead ran up and kissed me. (sighs) I don't know how to choose between these two entities that I have such strong feelings for, for which I have such strong feelings. Ugh, grammar, a curse in any dimension. (laughs) But Kerr Grissard, she... That she had to pick a difficult wor- word on that book, <laughs> but Kurgiser Night Song's Tales of Misadventures was my first love, and I have to try and save her, or at least understand what is happening with her. Truly, just give me some time alone. I'll join you sooner than you think. I love Ooh. all of your faces, even Nihilus, <laughs> who <laughs> continues to be a git. Love Aradia. That's very kind, actually. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And uh, so Sarah's there with you, and she goes, Oh, you know, I guess this is... (laughs) This is... (laughs) This is... uh, This is the right time to do it, too. So I'll just tell you guys. Um, Are you about to steal uh, Aradia's thunder? (laughs) Radio doesn't get two seconds in the light. <laughs> I'll, I'll wait two seconds. Okay, well, I just had to tell you that uh, Baba Yaga, you know, the Baba Yaga, um, you know, famous witch, uh, they're starting a, uh, they're opening a chain here in Inista, and they want me to, they heard about us defeating the hags and you know witches talk to witches and hags they heard about hags being defeated and they heard i was interested in commerce and capitalism and (laughs) so they want me to manage the store in ista down south and uh so i'm just i think i'm gonna go do that for a while and uh you know we'll see how that goes do you do you not like adventuring anymore I have so much money, Prady. I don't know. <laughs> and I want to try some corporate espionage uh, oh. as well. So, but, um, you know, I already talked to Max. I've been talking to Max about this, and he said, you know, he would take care of you guys, and so I don't have to worry. Don't worry. I'm leaving a bunch of beauty supplies with you guys, and I'll send them wherever you need. they need to be sent. If you ever run low, you can, um, you know, we can uh, send letters to each other and all that stuff. So it's not like I'm dying. Anyways, okay, bye. Oh, <laughs> <geez>. <laughs> 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 
Okay, see ya, Sarah. I mean, Jake, you gotta go make make that money. You know, that's what's important in life. Um, and Nyla says, I know it's ironic, but she was being very rude. Arabia, to Arabia? Sarah? No, I'm saying that about Sarah. I say it's a prodi. I agree. She's rude yeah. to all of us, especially God can't even give a radio like one second we can't just focus on a radio for dm dm note uh that was just me improvising so give her a break in case she doesn't <laughs> want it to be that way <laughs> oh okay well she should have written us a letter um, I, I... I mean i'm just i'm just joking but okay. yeah Prati Prati just like yeah he says to nihilus like yeah sarah just i mean she's just like loves money like I don't blame her, like, though. So. What the hell? All right. So uh, moving ahead in time a little bit. Um, you, uh, Max is... Oh, I thought that was my dog over here. Uh, no, that's um, Richard's. Uh, so Max <laughs> uh, gets a call from Beta Skrieg, five E's, the flump that you had previously met in the first episode. And... Um, you know, defeating a coven of hags in a large city like this doesn't go unnoticed. And Felix Tricknips is a uh, philanthrop philanthropist and a donor to these orphanages. And he was very pleased to uh, hear that his money is no longer going to such a horrible situation. And uh, Beta essentially hires the big bedfellows to find someone uh, named Alu, which is a uh, one of their the managers of the Tricknips Foundation um, that they had sent to the Virinal Dominion um, up north, and he went missing, and so they want to hire the big bedfellows, and they hired you, and so Max, um, being the great guy, Bravian that he is, Flying Head, uh, set you up with some new adventuring uh, buddies and one of them will meet you in Virinal and uh, the other two join you at a teleportation circle outside of uh, Inista and that's going to send you north to Revan's <laughs> Run and this is what we're, where uh, we'll introduce uh, Orson and Ashwin so if you want to uh, explain what they're looking at, either Orson. Oh. Um, so Orson uh, is a um, medium height, um, stout, um, ginger bearded, ginger haired, like almost kind of a mohawk, but fails to be a mohawk with a um, straw hat and overalls and just like too much clothing than is needed for a farmer. Perfect. And uh, before you went out there, uh, R Richard and Dave, uh, Martha, when Max was talking about who to who to uh, match play matchmaker with, uh, Martha suggested Orson because they are cousins. So um, Orson and Martha are cousins. So uh, there's that. And Ashwin, uh, you explained a lot of what you look like already but um i don't remember if you uh got into the details of the mouse folk oh yes yeah. so she's uh about two feet tall uh she's brown speckled mouse uh she has like a gold piercing in her ear and like wearing leather armor but she's mm -hmm. a tiny mouse <laughs> that's really it and <laughs> she's a pretty big mouse <laughs> That's a good point, Dave. Oh, it's big for mouse size, I guess. Uh, she is a fighter, so you finally have um, some some tanky tankiness on your side. So um, you guys talk, and you, especially going through a teleportation circle. I figure, like any anyone you go through a teleportation circle with. You're probably, uh, that breaks down some uh, first time uh, meeting someone barriers, uh, and you end up in Revan's Run, 
and you hop on a train, one of Felix Tricknip's arcane trains that runs west to east um, on the continent. And I sent, uh, I think I showed uh, Lex, I don't remember if I showed uh, Ryan, but um, I know Dave and Richard, you guys have the map mimic um, and kind of a rough map of Enver. Um, so Revan's Run is north of Anista, and uh, the train runs from Revan's Run north further to Whale Cliffs, and then from there east all the way through to uh, Serenity uh, Springs, which is right outside the Viranal Dominion. And um, yeah, you're now on an arcane train, and if you uh, will say you are on a dining car, and if you want to do any RP and ask some questions, feel free. Otherwise, let me know uh, what you want to do on this train. You're traveling east. Um, I, pro I probably should describe myself. Uh, oh, yeah. Good good call. I I am a, about a four-foot-tall crow with no wings. I'm a Kenku. Where I actually have a pretty good drawing of myself. You have a really good <laughs> uh, drawing of yourself. This... Oh, the new one. Oh, that's cool. So that's me. And yeah, I can I can communicate with my fellow uh, adventurers through through um, uh, telekinesis. Telepathy. No, yeah. telepathy. Yeah. And um, and when I'm talking to other characters, I have to just use sounds or like other phrases I've heard. Imitations. So I can't... Yeah. And. Uh... Yeah, it might have been a little startling to have someone pop in your head the first time when you saw Prodi um, and Max set you guys up with him. Uh, Nihilus, what do you look like? I, uh, You? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, what is Nihilus? Oh, you, you started saying I. I thought you were going to say something. Um, yeah, Nihilus is 5'2". He's got, like, light green skin. Um, he's a triton, so he looks like a fish person. Uh, I also have a drawing of him. It's not as good as the one that you just saw, but um, this is with my little notes and everything. But that's him just, like, moistening himself up with some water. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah, um, he's, he's pretty sassy and um rude and mean um and it works to his advantage a lot of the time so <laughs> those we're all happy about that aren't we sassy fish. <laughs> those uh <laughs> high charisma characters y'all mm -hmm. um okay and by the way nihilus your wonderful sister got into the school of her choice out in vera mall so she is doing great out there um, oh yeah, she's already told me, and we're okay with it. I'm, I'm, good. Uh, Nihilus decided to be a big person and not say anything rude or discouraging to her. <laughs> uh, but they did agree that they were not going to tell their parents that they found each other um, because they kind of want to both just keep on doing what they're doing on the land. And what what would uh what would your parents like? Uh, do if what what was your your guys's fear that you talked about um, in telling your oh parents? that we'd just be forced back home okay um, yeah and we don't want to go back home yeah and Annalyn was very uh, thankful and um, gracious to you and, yeah it was a you stay out of my way I'll stay out of your way situation yeah and she was just stoked to learn magic and um, and I did let her know that she'll never be better than me but. <laughs> Um, <laughs> okay. okay. But, Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Um, so while you're on the train, you're in the dining car. Uh, you see a uh, a tanned, weathered, skinned man, bald head, gray beard, carrying a ornate mahogany uh, cane with him, and he's got this giant over uh, coat duster type of thing on him and uh on the overcoat there's all sorts of trinkets on it seemingly random uh like at the bottom there's plates of metal they don't look runic uh what's carved into them 
um, but it does look just ornate. Uh, and there's little kind of two inch by four inch plates of metal at the bottom of his duster all the way around. Um, and uh, he's even got like a little lamp attached um, at his shoulder that hangs down to his waist. And um, you can see daggers all along his um, uh, stomach area underneath the coat. And he approaches you guys and he uh, says, hello, my name is Inquisitor Velov, and... That was not the voice I was expecting. <laughs> uh, you, I was told... Uh, oh, I neglected to introduce who I am working for. This is me working through my Russian. Um, <laughs> oh, that's what that is. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> I am a botnik, which is a monster hunter, and um, I am here to escort you to the Viranol Dominion and, well, answer any questions you may have. I have worked for uh, Beta. Uh, how do you? How do you? Prati just like points to like his chest and just points to like the, like the, it's like wants him to say his name. Uh, pr Prodi. Wait, my chat. Velov. You, you, okay, okay. I didn't hear. Velov. 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 Vil. Vil. Velov. Velov. Veal. Love. V. E. L. O. V. Velov. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> last name? <laughs> that, that's my last name. Oh, that's uh, your last name. Uh, uh, title is Inquisitor, and yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm here to escort you into the Dominion and uh, help you find Alu. And when Beta gave you... Uh, he gave you the physical description of Alu, um, who is also human, and uh, what you know of the Viranol Dominion, uh, what's well known about the Viranol Dominion, is that it's a hermit kingdom to the north of the continent, and uh, without doing too much of a lore dump on you guys, um, after the erasure, uh, the uh, rulers of the Dominion uh, opened up the the area to traders. Still, not a lot of people would go there. It's a mainly human uh, kingdom, and uh, it's known for its crystals. And um, Felix has uh, Beta lets you know that Felix has a vested interest in that place because that's where he got a lot of the crystals for his uh, for his war forged that he supplied to the war effort as well as the arcane trains and a few other things. Um, so the crystals of that area are valuable uh, to him. And uh, Beta tells you that uh, essentially uh, the, the Countess there, Kalina, is an inventor in her own right and she has stopped communicating and there's just weird things going on and they need to find Alu who's sent to investigate. Uh, but yeah, so this inquisitor is a monster hunter. And, uh, if you don't want to ask him questions, I'll move, move ahead in time. If you like. Did, did, uh, Hey, v Velov, Velov, uh, did yeah. you, what did beta send you because he expects us to be, uh maybe dealing with some kind of a monster uh well he uh he's pretty so velov is pretty old as well a super weathered skin makes him look older but even still he's old he just uh velov says yeah until we find uh and you're supposed to be meeting up with you're supposed to be meeting up with a human named Crispin Oakenshaft. 
and uh, in in uh, Pruyets, which is a town, uh, the first town into the Dominion. Um, and Velov says, yeah, uh, I also am from the uh, uh, Vironol Mountains and, uh, well, uh, I know some, I've experienced some things there that are not um, uh, to be trifled with and uh, also it just gives him another you can keep an eye on me you can keep an eye on me and I can keep an eye on you guys and beta okay. beta is a uh, um, a very uh, s studious I don't know the word studious fellow he likes to keep track of things so yeah what what do you what is your history with beta if i may ask honestly it was so long ago i can't really remember but uh i i, I believe we, we were once hired by him to uh do some uh protecting of of an event that was right, the whistle right. that was to get rid of the whistle nope right no, different one. Way before that, the first time you and I met, remember it was magical. <laughs> way before that, that was like one of the first things we did. No. <laughs> episode, so episode one is you're protecting um, uh, the cornerstone. Your yeah, you uh, the cornerstone laying ceremony. Yeah, yeah. Got it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know some things. And and Vilov <laughs> says, oh, well. Uh, this is a fun table. I'm going to go <laughs> to sleep. Uh, it was pleasure, oh. and he looks at. Uh, Can your... I have one of your daggers? Uh, no, these are family oh. heirlooms. Uh, he looks at you, Orson, and he goes, "Are you right off the farm? Like you look? How? I uh, are." Yeah, right off the farm, but uh, are you a salesman? Because you have all of these things. They're obviously for sale. You could not have that many daggers and those many runes without being for sale. And he starts poking into his clothes. <laughs> like, so are any of these for sale right now? I could use an no, extra dagger I, I, if you're not using them right uh, now. Jeez. Uh, well, <laughs> uh, he's looking down, and he, he's not really uh, – moving away uh from your prodding uh pun intended uh but uh he says no but uh you know what and he reaches down into his ankle and he pulls out a dagger there and he sets it on the table and he you two fight about this uh you like daggers this is not family heirloom so here and he looks at you ashwin and goes you are adorable adorable <laughs> i can't say the word uh and he says you know i met another one of you in the in the forest uh down south uh, how long ago it was long decades ago so uh but anyway you are cute and, and he looks at uh everyone else and says you do not cross these mouse folk i've seen them do crazy shit <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, yeah okay well nihilus is very <laughs> quick and swipes the dagger off the table so it's mine now anything special about it <laughs> uh, it's a normal looking dagger oh what like what like it's got it's just regular metal what what else do you Okay, that, no, that's fine. <laughs> Are you saying like magic? Do you have identify? I wanted it to be special. Oh, do you He's have so many of them? I figured maybe one of them would be special. Yeah, it's not family heirloom. Uh, yeah, so I guess you have just that dagger now. Okay, Nihilus throws it back on the floor. Yeah. Well, which of those are family heirlooms that you're willing to part with with a good <laughs> price? Uh. Well, you know, sometimes you might be stuck and a dagger won't help you, so money will, and I might have some money. Uh, well, uh, how much do you, any, he, he opens up his coat a little bit and you see uh, two kinds of daggers, 
Uh, one is more of a Chris, uh, the wavy uh, mm. type of dagger, and mm. then uh, the other is more of the straight dagger, similar to the one that he put on the table, except it's got inlaid, um, looks like bronze in the blade, um, and, mm. and he says, uh, well, uh, how much do you have? Uh oh. So, uh, let me see. And he looks at both the, the daggers, uh, like, carefully. And he says, well, I think I'll be generous and I'll give you one platinum for both. Well, wow. uh, for family heirloom, I cannot say that that is Sold. close to what I'm <laughs> going for. If you want to make a persuasion check or intimidation check or something okay. like that, you may do that. All right, let me, let's go with, hmm, trying to figure out which one is better. Uh, I'll go with Persuasion. Okay. Here we go. Let's see. Oh, that is not high. <laughs> I, roll... <laughs> I roll an eight. Okay, well, uh, that's a little low on the low side. How about you increase that to about five platinum? And uh, I Whoa. will. Uh, it's a family. <laughs> yeah. Five platinum. Prodi well... makes that noise. Yeah. Well, five platinum, I could get me ten of these. So I'm good for now. All right. And, uh... What do you guys need daggers so bad for? <laughs> He's just got them there. They well, look so neat. <laughs> you know, I have to cut the meat, you know? You know, you yeah, can't well, I, I without up, cutting the pig. I grew up with nothing. I have no concept of what a platinum can even buy. I, I would have thought five <laughs> platinum could buy this whole train. Uh, <laughs> why don't I buy also, the train? Cod, Cody the, doesn't need the... knives uh, to cut his meat. He's got a beak. Wait, I could buy the train? Where's the... Where's the train driver? You could buy anything. This world runs on the <laughs> disgusting materialism and ah, like, can you guys? You guys don't even know. We just, ah, oh, we just took down this covenant. It's like these <laughs> kids were just being just ripped apart by these witches, and no one was doing anything. It took us like going in there and like trying to figure it out. Like, where were where was where were the authorities? Where was the government? What's wrong with people? People are obsessed with materialism. I just, I just can't. And Prati just takes. Prati just takes the. It's okay, the little, Birdie. It's he's got okay. his little nip. He's got his little nip <laughs> in his in his robe, and he just takes a sip of perpetual gin. And he just, <laughs> just calms down, and he starts fiddling with the silverware on the table. <laughs> just, so you said like... I could buy a train. <laughs> I, I want to see if I can buy what? this train uh, right now. Uh, Orson, I'm, I'm sorry. Anywhere. What kind of farmer are you again? Because it seems like you've got an awful lot of money. Well, you know, I had done some adventuring in the past. I just retired to be a farmer. You know, I used to be in an adventuring guild myself. We were called the potato sackers. <laughs> <laughs> That's awful. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but we were very successful at what we did. Okay, okay. How much was, uh, would would yeah. you say you brought with you? Oh, uh, well, I wouldn't be an adventurer if <laughs> I could tell you exactly what was in my sack. <laughs> and... I don't just show my sack to anybody. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Noted. <laughs> and it's about that time a uh, waitress <laughs> approaches a table and, oh, I love a waitress. And sh and she goes, "Hey there, I'm here to serve you uh on this uh while you're in the dining car that is uh and she looks just exhausted and um just very fed just not into her job clearly. Uh so uh may I uh get you anything uh some ale or uh whiskey or uh Jeez. Cheese, cheese. <laughs> Mighty my, you are adorable. <laughs> and um, she goes, D -d Do you know what kind? Uh, actually, we only Wait. have two kinds. What, what, what? Okay, I can, I can do that. 
won't be uh, a bit of trouble. Uh, what can I get you three? I would like I'm some just... goat cheese. Oh. Well, uh, that is <laughs> that is not one of the uh, cheeses we have, uh, but uh, we have cheddar, and we have uh, something called Jack. I'm will... having a really hard time picturing Ashwin doing some fucked up shit um, <laughs> after that, but I believe it. You know, I trust <laughs> trust your sources. Um, I'll just take an ale, please. <laughs> Okay, and Prati, you've probably had people underestimate you as well for being uh, a small bird, so um, I'm sure he has, I'm not asking you to give me his feelings on that, but I'm sure he has some stories about that. Uh, and she goes, uh, you, sir, uh, to you, Nihilus, uh, may I get you something at all? Um, Nihilus just uh, side eyes um, Ashwin a little bit because she keeps getting all these um, compliments about being adorable, <laughs> uh, and then he he looks at the waitress and says, um, "No, I'm good. Just some water, thank you." Okay, would you like uh, uh, club soda, sparkling, uh, flat? They have more water choices than cheese choices here. <laughs> Just flat, thank you. All right. Uh, and she knocks on the table and heads on off. And uh, um, someone, a uh, busboy, comes right behind her and um, just kind of throws silverware on the table, like in a just haphazard way uh, in front of you guys. And so, like, it's almost just like a mess of silverware on your table now. Um, oh, are you trying to stab us now? Just... Watch it here. <laughs> you gotta put the knife blade in, facing the spoon. Everyone, <laughs> I grew up with. I grew up with nothing. I even I know that. What what's wrong with? He starts messing with all the silver and trying to set everyone's place. And this... can I can I cast ray of frost on the floor so he slips? <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Okay, I, I, can't, I just like point my finger at the floor in front of him, and a ray of frost shoots out. Okay, I'll make freezing a, the floor. Um, uh, with a fresh coat of ice for the waiter or for me? No, <laughs> for the guy who threw the silverware. At us. Uh, let me. I just realized I put my dice too far away, so I'm gonna grab them. It'll be two seconds. <clears throat> oh no. The waiting music. Mm -hmm. You guys didn't start the uh, girl from Ipanema yet? Uh, elevator <laughs> no, not that one. We don't have the rights. Oh, good call. Um, you guys like my public domain? Maybe. <laughs> you guys like my bonnet of dice? Your bonnet of dice? Yeah, it, you can wear it as a bonnet if you want. <laughs> so we were playing a game of Betrayal Legacy, and, the, and Jake came up with a great dice throwing technique. I he just it. like no, he would just that. do this until it like came out of his hand. Don't don't spoil it. I'm gonna do it right now. No. Uh, uh, well, you know what? It was a. I thought, yeah, you, I thought you were gonna use time, your bonnet. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you, just shake, you just so shake. You just shake violently. And at some point, it falls out of your hand and onto the table, and then you you just rolled the dice. So you know, the best part about being human is that we can like choose to do things. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me roll his dexterity check. Uh, yeah. Okay. So this this bus boy, he pretty much doesn't give a shit. Uh, clearly, doesn't give a shit about anything. Um, and as he's walking away, even before you finish what you were saying, Prati. Uh, he's walking away down the train car and Nihilus uh, freezes the floor in front of him and you see him like go and catch himself and he just looks down he's like what in the f I hate this job and he just keeps walking um, on back to the kitchen car so it was a good it was a good try Nihilus uh, I can't, I can't imagine that this nobody had that much dexterity. I don't like I don't like that. It was rigged the whole time. 
I don't know what to say to that. You rolled a 19. Uh, uh, okay, that's fair. Um, yeah, so... You might have been an ice skater. <laughs> uh, it's about that time. It brings back your water and your cheddar and jack cheese, as well as... Um, what did you... You had an ale, Prody? Yeah. Yeah. And Orson, you wanted cheese as well? Yep. Okay. And uh, she sets it in front of you and uh, says, shall I bill this to your rooms or... Um... I thought this was on the house. Oh, the cheese definitely is. Thank and not you. the drinks. They, our, our, our tickets didn't come with a voucher. Oh, you do you, do you have your v- voucher on you? No. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Essentially, she's just not in the loop, and your whole ticket is covered. So even if you just say, you've just been saying, yes, bill it to the room because it's covered already because it's Felix's okay, okay. train. Okay, I didn't know that. Um, yes, bill it to the room, and please bring us a, a keg of ale. Thanks. Uh, well, uh, I'm not, a keg, uh, she just walks away and... Bill it to the room. Okay. <sighs> We're the wardens of the Gid Ward. <laughs> I don't know if you've heard of us. <laughs> Is she still there when he's saying this? No, she took off. I, I think he's saying that to you, to you guys. Yeah, I was just kind of saying that. Like, oh, okay. Joking you guys. It's kind of redundant to be the warden of a of the Gid Ward. It's like mm-hmm. too many wards. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Uh, <laughs> so you guys enjoy your your uh, cheese. It is very poor cheese, Ashwin, and um, yeah, it's just not very good. Um, and uh, she comes back with your ale, Nihilus. And Roddy. Yeah, you you already had yours. Uh, I ordered a ke- a keg of ale. Okay. Because we can charge it to the room. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm Whole not. Keg. Uh-huh. I'm, not, I'm not gonna bring a keg out here, sweetie. There's nowhere to put it. <laughs> Just right smack in the middle of the table. I don't understand what what is happening here. Are you are you are you new to like civilization? So, uh, yeah, to this this primitive sim- civilization. Yes. Okay. I sure am. <laughs> Why can't you get a keg? All right. I get the- I'm at the farm. Make a persuasion check. Uh, just out of she's just um, doesn't want to deal I with never it anymore. Roll well, so okay. I forgot what my persuasion is. Let me add that up real quick. Okay, I got twenty total. Cool. Yeah, she gets exasperated and goes to the back. And a few yes. moments later, um, <laughs> this is essentially how his charisma goes. It's high charisma, but it's not like anyone's doing him like they're not happy about anything. They're no, doing. they never are. Um, uh, and uh, the bus boy comes back out, careful not to slip on the floor. Um, and uh, he uh, sets the keg. It's like a pony keg, so it's not too big. Uh, it's a so it'll fit on the table and he sets it on there and and uh it's not opened it's just he a new keg. At all. it's still got the bung in it so uh yeah uh, he just sets it <laughs> okay, on the table so Nihilus grabs one of his daggers because he yes. does own two of his own he grabs one of his daggers and stabs the little cork thing and pulls it out and then the beer the ale just uh you know, it's pouring out and he puts a glass underneath, but then lets the rest kind of just pour out and he takes his drink. Okay. Um, I find a spare glass and just like find extra ale and it's like, I don't want this to go to waste. Uh, and the busboy peeks in and goes, <sighs> and then he uh, goes behind the, uh, the uh, kitchen car goes into the kitchen car and a few moments later you hear and the train's moving at a pretty good uh, s- speed there and uh, a few moments later you hear ah! and then uh, that's <laughs> all you hear um, oh no <laughs> and uh, 
so some some like human um teens come up around that time uh probably in their 20s early 20s and they saw some they, teens in teens their, their 20s, 20s. <laughs> uh sorry yeah <laughs> uh yes it's a fantasy world so sure <laughs> wrap your head around that one um, it's like it's like beverly hills now 210 where everyone's clearly yeah, in their yeah 20s. exactly <laughs> andrea exactly. was clearly a teenager leave her alone <laughs> Yeah, uh, Brandon. Yeah, Brandon walks up to your table and starts uh, <laughs> starts uh, pouring himself, take, taking some of your ale. There, uh, he says, "Pretty cool move." I don't think you'd mind if I take some of this table ale, do you? Table ale? Yeah, fine, whatever. <laughs> whoever you are. All right, whoever you are. See ya. And he uh, goes back. Uh, to his table with his buddies and um if there's nothing else you guys i do uh nihilist does want to uh ask ashwin a couple questions cool um hey hey ashwin hello uh i okay um you're tiny uh you're now the tiniest one here (laughs) you're now the tiniest one of the group uh, but I just need to get a little bit of a feel for you. Uh, what is Don't your, how, how, how old are you? Like, are you an adult in your species? I, yes. Race? <laughs> yes. I am 10, but oh. that's old. Oh. <laughs> okay. Five, Double five digits. is adult age in mouse terms, so. Wow. Okay. You're you're just uh you're giving off these little vibes and um I don't like it but I will learn to 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 accept it. Why do you like being the little man? Well, I I feel like I was always the adorable one of the group and <laughs> now you now it's apparently going to be you and uh just gotta, <laughs> you know kind of get used to it is all. We we, we can be a joint team here. <laughs> we can all be with our cuteness together. Okay, we'll see how long that lasts. Yeah, I guess uh, I'm just not part of this conversation at all. I'm four feet tall. Like, it's not even a question if Prati is adorable. You're hearing this in your heads. Prati is is uh, telepathically saying this to you guys in your heads. Oh no, Prati, you you've always been great. That's Why can't you both adorable Thanks. like salt and pepper shakers? <laughs> One could be salty, the other could be peppery. Okay, okay. You know what? It's just gonna get it's just gonna take some time getting used to is all. It's gonna be a lot easier sneaking into places without Sarah Gigantor. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true, Gigantor. I am gonna miss her belly button though. Yeah, what? I know. I <laughs> why why do you miss her belly button? Do you like sleep in it? No <laughs> No, I make it always right at eye level. Oh, oh okay. It's short. Yes, yes. She was she was a large lady. Ah, I see. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think we're I think we're ready to move on. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, you guys uh, finish your table ale, and it's everywhere. And uh, go to bed. And what are the Have you guys talked about um, Prady and Nihilus? Or is it like too early in the relationship to bring the big bed into it? Or... No, it's never too early. Okay, so um, uh, is this a, what kind of bed do we have in this room? Is it one bed, two beds, three beds more? What what's going on? Yeah, there's it's like a normal train car, but with two bunk beds. So there's mattresses on each bunk bed. So you guys would have to figure yeah, out take a way. Yeah, take the mattresses off, and we. We put them in a configuration that makes it all one big bed. Sure. You want to explain to... Uh, uh, looks like yeah. Ashwin's a little confused. Um, yeah, Nihilus turns to them and just says, Bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> Why is this one big bed? There were four perfectly good bunk beds. I... Well, it's just a tr- it's a tradition in our adventuring group. Uh, the first night we spent together was at a an inn called the the Big Bed Inn, and mm-hmm. we just all slept in one big bed. And it's, 
has nothing to do with uh, anything sexual. It's just very, you know, peaceful and comforting for our adventuring group to just all share the same bed, and that's that's about it. Just a tradition. Okay. Can't do start... that logic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, start taking off his clothes. <laughs> like, <laughs> he's now in his boxers. He's like, okay, <laughs> I'm now ready to bed. <laughs> Okay. Is, is Ashwin gonna be burrowing in between, like someone's no. legs? Like, how does this on work? On top of your head. Oh, okay. On top of your head. Okay. So I... not quite like a pet. Okay. <laughs> so, do you have trouble sleeping at night, Ashwin? Because aren't aren't um like mice nocturnal? I mean, some, but not all. So you just you just used to it. You're, you're oh, sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I know how that goes. People, <laughs> people always think I want to eat their trash, and I'm like, um, only some trash. I get to choose which trash I eat. Thank you very much. <laughs> cut to, <laughs> cut to a random scene like in the past of Anista, <laughs> where where some old man who's barely got his robe tied on, he's got a bag of trash. <laughs> <laughs> While uh, the <laughs> Prodi's just going home from the bar, probably one night, and he stops with a bag of trash and looks at Prodi, and looks down at the bag of trash, and looks up at Prodi. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> like offers it to him. Yeah, Prodi thinks about a little Eldritch blast in his direction. <laughs> then, then better of it. That would be so cool. Um, <laughs> Anyways, uh, I love how uh, committed Nihilus is to the big bed uh, thing, even though it's it's got to be hard for him with... He's got the portable bathtub, mm -hmm. so it's got to be hard for him not to... Not to... Uh... No, the bathtub is on the bed. Oh, so you put... So, oh. so this clawfoot bathtub... That perfectly fits you. Um, okay. All right. Yeah, it's on the bed, but I'm in the tub on the bed. So he has a hey. a bathtub that... you see that... Aquaman? <laughs> <laughs> Is it accurate? <laughs> cool. All right. Uh, so uh, time passes, and um, if there's no objections, I will... Uh, Fast forward to the end of the train ride, and um... uh, Prati, like in the middle of the night, he, well, I don't know, it's just gonna screw up my long rest. He 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 gets up and he sleeps on top of the train. He sleeps like he tries to. He falls asleep like on top of the train. He yeah. sleeps in the big bed for a little bit, but then he gets up and he sleeps. On yeah, top no, that won't interrupt your um, long rest. And this is a multi-day journey on this train. It's about six hundred miles. He puts uh, his he puts his arms out as the wind is going by him in the middle of the night, and he just he just is like ah, oh, this is it'd be so great if I had wings. Did, uh, does he say I'm the king of the world? Um, <laughs> please say yes. <laughs> <laughs> he has never seen that James Cameron. Oh, uh, okay, okay, that's not bad. <laughs> It's a classic. <laughs> and then on the wind, the of the night, Orson's going to unconsciously cuddle somebody <laughs> with his big bare arms, just like get in the tub. Yeah, <laughs> probably like probably hugging the tub. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, I, I uh, Nihilus does sometimes sleep with his arm like outside touching the bed. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, bonding. So, okay. Uh, so Prati, uh, on the. Uh, as you're, it's a full moon, so it's pretty bright out there, and you just see planes. Uh, you're traveling through just a, the plains, the biggest plains region of the continent, and um, to the north is the North Sea. It's pretty cold out, so I would I would liken it to, yeah, probably um, Wyoming and Montana type of weather, and it's the winter it's uh the third month of the year and um so it's towards the end of winter and um it's pretty cold out but you have the proper equipment 
And in the distance, go ahead and make a perception check. Uh, let's see here. Perception. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, 20. Wow. Okay. Not, not in that 20. Yeah. Um, and would you say Prodi is learned on other birds or no? Mm, I would say no. Okay. I mean, just, just crows. Um, just kinku. in the distance you see a, a bird, but you're not it it seems to be far away but it's you can still make out like the talons and the beak of this huge majestic bird backlit by the full moon and um it's flying in and out of the clouds and wow um so yeah it's show off <laughs> as the arcane train flies through the um the great plains of Envir and uh you hear a little voice in your head as well. It says, Prody It's MC. Hey MC. Uh how you doing, bud? I haven't it's been a while. I'm doing amazing. We just took down all these freaking uh witches and it was uh, it was gruesome but we got through it. I got turned into a bird and then I got out of it, and you are now we're we're wardens of of the Gid Ward. Yeah, but I got turned into an actual crow, though. Okay. Uh, well, how's the progress coming on? Uh, on uh, did you find anything else more about the uh, the rod or anything like that? The. Uh, yeah, I did. <laughs> How long do you want to wait for me to go through my notes? Um, so basically, uh, he says, well, you know, um, did you look at your map mimic? And it, it uh, you attuned to the shard yeah, yeah. of the rod. And it, right, right. right. And yep. it, uh, where, it put that mark up, up north, right, uh, on the continent? Oh, yeah, I remember that. So basically, he's telling you that, um, you know, he is happy that you're heading north because that's where the uh, you're getting closer to the mark on your map mimic, and ah, okay. um, so obviously closer to what you think might be, or I don't know what you think, but I would assume you think it might be the next shard of the rod, and so. What what form does the map mimic take? Is it an actual map I have in my hands, or it's, it's a, just on? It's on the piece of the rod that I have. So the map mimic looks like a normal map, but when it's not fed, it sprouts a very vicious looking ma uh, mouth and starts biting for things. Um, but I assume okay. I'm not gonna like check in on that. So I assume you're feeding it. Um, okay. And uh, but it looks like a normal map, and as you travel, it will update locations on like locations you go to on the map. So you've Got been it. to Revan's Run, and so it marks that, and uh, you've been to Whale Cliff and marks that. Um, and there's a series of uh, towns that you pass through on this train that I can give you the names of uh, later if you want, or if you want them now, I can give them to you now. Um, but uh yeah that's how it works and then uh mc says well listen whew, i'm really getting in here getting in deep with queen mab so um yeah uh, i'm just happy you're still with me on this and uh he's not if you remember when you traveled into the future and he talked to you he was very panicked and just yeah yeah i remember that yeah he's freaking he's, out he's not... He said I was his last, uh, like, follower, essentially. Yeah, so it's not even close to as dire and anxiety-ridden as that was, but um, as you talk to him, you can tell uh, there's some panic in his voice, and he um, he basically says, "We're gonna get you those, we're gonna get you those wings, and uh, so, some some real wings, not like uh, you know some." 
something somebody makes that can make you glide or something uh, we're gonna we're gonna fix that uh, I think Queen Mab has the power to do that and um, oh man it's, man it stinks that you're not like simpatico with Queen Mab no I am simpatico and not I'm not simpatico with um, well, she doesn't know I'm not simpatico, but the uh, Sathia, the Sky Duchess. Um, oh, okay. I'm... I thought you said you said in deep with Queen Nab. I thought that meant bad in trouble oh, with her. Oh, fair enough. Um, no, um, he's working on the side with Queen Mab uh, of the Unseely Court, and um, uh, basically, he was the consort of Sathia, the Sky Duchess. And she's a celestial, so, um, but yeah. Uh, so he, if you have nothing, if you don't want to ask him anything else, he'll leave you to stare at the stars and enjoy yourself on top of the train. Yeah, I mean, I still have the same question, which is like, should I be like trying to turn this piece of rod like into a fully complete like instrument or something, or just keep? Oh yeah, keep so. That what a bu bunch of impatient puppies I got next to me. Um, uh, <laughs> he uh, he says, "Oh yeah, I, I I've heard it's um, I looked into it and I've heard that like once you have multiple parts and you have them in the correct order, uh, they will merge automatically if you put them together. So, okay. um, yeah, got it. And yeah." Uh, anything else? Thank you. That's it. Thank okay. you. So you, so he, uh, he, uh, leaves you on top of the train and, um, we'll cut to the, the, the morning and you guys are arriving in Serenity Springs, which is the last stop, uh, on the, uh, track East and it's right outside. You see in front of you this mountain range that's not as tall as um not as tall as the Grimborn Range Mountains, some of the Grimborn Range Mountains are, uh, which is south. Um but this mountain, the Viranol Range, encircles the Dominion and it's almost per perpetually dusk and uh dark, just a lot of reds and oranges and um can kind of give you a Mount Doom feel. Um, uh, no, no, uh, Eye of Sauron or anything like that, but, um, so that's in front of you, and this tiny little town, uh, is in front, uh, where the, the train is stopping, and it leaves you there, and in, Inquisitor, um, uh, Inquisitor Velov joins you, and he would have, um, checked in with you guys, uh, periodically uh, for the next couple days, but he joins you and goes, uh, Beta told you to look at the, uh, at the cave. Jake's looking up the name of the cave he wrote down. The uh, Caves of Belog. Uh, that's the last uh, we heard of Alu, so I know where that is, and... It's morning time, so he suggests that you guys um, head there now if you want. <clears throat> yeah, sure. Yeah, let's get to it. Cool. So, uh, Does, um, did, did our time on the train with Velov uh, make him, or not make him, but is he more uh, liking of me at this point? Um, it depends what you, like, would you have? Oh, I just want to, like, graze his arm and like hold his hand and then let go oh, walk away from him without like any words being said <laughs> like uh -huh. okay yeah no he wouldn't be down for that um <laughs> he would be very off put for that uh, uh about that okay. so um okay. well but, i mean nihilus does it sure 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 and so he not so subtly like when you guys are walking <laughs> to the caves he's always trying to be on the opposite side uh, <laughs> of, of the group <laughs> yeah can you picture it just like a group of you uh -huh. and he yeah sure cool. anyways um 
Sorry, I had to get some water, and now the dogs are starting to play. It's about to be pandemonium! Uh, and you make it to this cave, and as you were approaching the mountain range, and there's a little pass that goes through the Virinal range um, to get you into the Dominion, um, but you guys are going to the side of that, just adjacent to this pass, uh, and um, as you get close to this range, you start seeing, like, sparkly... Uh, almost an opalescence in some of the rock. Uh, it becomes more clear as you get more into the mountains. And in Inquisitor Velov uh, doesn't really take pause. It doesn't look like he's worried about uh, just walking into these mountains and into this cave. And uh, as you guys enter, you're about 100 feet in to the cave, he pauses and doesn't say anything and he's just looking around and listening and um i'm gonna put these dogs out um <laughs> are you can you see it yeah i think you guys can see them yeah uh-huh uh, they're playing they're adorable yeah they are quite uh cute elevator music <laughs> You know, have you guys ever played the Jackbox games? That's the waiting around yes. music. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've played a lot of it then. <laughs> I have. A lot. A lot uh, where I used to live in my house, like every party would devolve into just playing all the Jackbox games. Mm. So I think I've only ever played um, Drawful. Drawful's and then there's great. another one. I think it's called like Quip, Quip It or something or something. Quiplash. 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 There you go. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's the first, uh, the first like party pack of those two games. Do they have a lot of other ones though? There's one where like you're all dead and it's a trivia or you're all like. Oh, yeah. It's like, it's like a horror themed trivia thing. It's great. Hmm. Like um, if you get a question wrong, you're dead. You, you die. Dead. Yeah. <laughs> If two people get a question wrong, then you have to face off and do like a little death match thing. <laughs> and then at the end, you're all ghosts like moving across the screen. Like as you get questions right, it's great. And are they all like just mobile? Yeah, it's all mobile. Oh, okay. That's the best part is that you don't you don't need anything. You just mm -hmm. need bones, which everyone has. So yeah, yeah, cool. Dogs are outside playing now, and everything is right with the world. <laughs> um, okay. It's so weird with dogs when you want them to go outside. The bulldog was just staring at me like, you want me to follow you outside? Is that what you want? <laughs> uh, anyways, so uh, Inquisitor Velov is listening in the cave, and you hear kind of harmonics, uh, a high-pitched harmonic sound. Um, not quite bell-like, but... Uh, just almost like you're rubbing your finger uh, on the top of a wine glass. Um, I don't know how you'd describe that sound, but it's similar to that. It's a harmonic. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. So he goes, he says to you, There are many uh, crystalline beasts in these mountains and in the uh, dominion so uh, you know be careful and uh, sometimes the crystals aren't only crystals so uh, but you're coming in there with us right uh... <laughs> <laughs> the answer should be yes yes Come join the adventure. Uh, well, that I was I was not contracted for that, but uh, and uh, but if you would like to uh, share equally in whatever we find, I think you would just enjoy going in for the adventure. I don't think you want, or the just money. for the the inquiry of it, Mister Inquisitor. Yes, I have. I have. Uh, I have explored uh, much in my life, and uh, I have survived for a reason. So, uh, how about how about you come with us? You lead us through this this cave. 
uh, and then you'd like kind of point out what's what's cool, what's not cool, and then uh, you just you know your payment is your satisfaction. How about that? Uh, well, uh, he's basically saying just like, sure, I'll go with you, um, but obviously I want a fair share of whatever's found of satisfaction. Uh, do you want? <laughs> Do you want to make a persuasion check? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's 11. Yeah, he's not having it. it. Damn um, it. Um, the, the four of us, the big bedfellows, we, like, have a little aside. We're just like, I mean, what if we run into something in there? Like, it's kind of nice to have an extra character. <laughs> for, for monster fodder, right? Wait, how much are we getting paid not, for this? It's Do not going to reduce each of our shares that much. It's going from a quarter of a share to a fifth. It's not going to be that big a difference. Hmm. That's true. It's not that big of a difference. And, you know, if for some reason someone needs to be missing and we need to have a portion, then <laughs> we know who we think. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Say what that again? Was that? We could just push him later and run away. <laughs> Gosh, you two are so we'll devious. <laughs> you're you're fitting in quite well. Um yes, we'll we'll take him with us. We'll we'll share our earnings. Yeah, Do so you... we finish our aside and we go I just go up to him and I go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay. Uh so I assume Nihilus you don't you don't uh put in finger quotes to sharing to him. <laughs> no, I don't. Okay. Uh yes. Caw, caw, caw. So he agrees and um he pulls out a crossbow uh as he's walking down the uh the cave entrance and it opens up uh much bigger as you're in there. Um and uh some of these these rocks with the tiny crystals that are in them uh do have some some glow to them do put off some amount of light uh nothing that will it's not like it gives you dark vision or or removes darkness but it it puts off a decent amount of uh, so you're we have one human and a mouse folk do mouse folk have dark vision uh i don't okay but Prodi, do you? I don't think so. I have dancing lights. Can I just cast that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and so you can just snap. Yep, they're on. Bingo. What <laughs> color are those lights? Uh, they are uh, a yellow and a blue. They just kind of alternate and, and dance around yellow and blue. Cool. Uh, so there you go. That solves that. Um, and Inquisitor... Uh, Velov is human as well, so he thanks you. Uh, and as you get in there, you, you start hearing the harmonics get louder and louder and louder. And um, there is a uh, a uh, a human in there, and it's basically just uh, working on some rocks and. Um, He's got a little pick in his hand, and um, everybody make a... I don't want to ask for your passive uh, scores, because I forgot to get uh, Ashwin's and Orson's, but just everyone make a uh, perception check. Or uh, make an intelligence check. If you want to use something interesting, a different skill, let me know uh, what it might be, and then we can go from there. Um, to answer your question, I have low light vision, but not dark. Okay. Dark vision. Um, and I rolled a thirteen. I got a nine. For intelligence. Yeah. Oh, I rolled a twenty. Ooh. Nice. I rolled an eight. Okay. So Ashwin, you see, uh, you're not quite sure what the heck this human is doing. Um, it's hard to see in the light very like uh, the details of Alu you were told that um, he's got a scar on his uh, face kind of um, 
like he might have taken a large cut to his nose at some point, but it's a pretty big scar on his nose. Um, but his back is to you, but you can see him using this tiny pick on these rocks, but he's just kind of like glancing off the rock with it. Like it's just kind of like sparks. No, but it's like if he's trying to pick or, or remove anything from these rocks or break them, he is he is not going to get very far with the uh, <laughs> with the job he's doing. Um, yeah. So he's just it looks funny and that's not how you break rocks. It's pretty obvious. Um, so, yeah, um, you can tell people or not. Uh, it's up to you. Hey, hey guys! There's a, there's a, there's a silly man up ahead. <laughs> what, what is, what is he doing? What's he doing? I um, I'm not sure if he's trying to break something, but he's doing it a poor, poor job of it. Oh, like zombie-like? Maybe he's, maybe he's just like not totally there. I mean, we could just go ask. Oh. Or maybe we should help him <laughs> and help ourselves. Um, is this the moment where we push Velov towards? <laughs> up to you. <laughs> Just like push him towards Alu. <laughs> wait a second. Wait a second. Let's think this through. Isn't doesn't he technically work for Beta too? Yes. I don't know if we want to just like intentionally get rid of someone that works for Beta, right? Beta will never know. Uh, let's just like okay. Uh... <laughs> You'll just know that every time he sends someone to work with us, so they don't come back. But Velov, go, 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 go! Check what he's doing. Okay. Yeah, Velov. Uh, you go ask him what's what's up. Inquisitor Velov. You're the Inquisitor. Uh, looks at you guys, and he says, "You know that is a title, not like, not, <laughs> not meant, not meant to be taken true, you know, truly." I can't do my R's truly. Um, <laughs> so he's he. Then why have to? Well, it sounds good. <laughs> uh, he uh, looks at you guys and he's like, "Okay," and he still has his crossbow out and he um, walks up and uh, grabs like a pebble on the ground, small rock, and throws it at the person yeah. wow uh, really good inquisiting <laughs> it's it's just the title <laughs> <laughs> i just i just imagine prodi being like in perfect mimicry just being like it's just the title uh, <laughs> um so the human who's seemingly picking at these rocks um looks down at the rock that was just heaved his way and he turns around and uh have you guys moved up like have you guys followed at a certain distance behind i would say i did or nihilus did okay what about Orson would have. okay like, Aspen just like went for it went in <laughs> so she's like ahead <laughs> did you he are... just charged right in oh so you went ahead of velov or are you like right with him i'm with him like okay we're Keep in steady pace. Okay, so you, so uh, you're about 20, 20 feet away. Uh, Velov is, and um, the rest of you can be as far away from Velov uh, as you want. And this human turns around, and sure enough, there is a scar on this man's nose. He's got a shaved uh, sides of his head, and... Um, looks like he's balding but he's just wearing the same type of haircut that um he's had since he had a lot more hair um and he has some some piercings in his eyebrow and um pretty much dressed for traveling similar to um the people that were on the train that were going east with you all as well to uh serenity um spring so um he turns around and goes can I help you? Hello. What up? Well, What's aren't you the cutest? And... 
<laughs> no, Alyssa goes, ugh. <laughs> uh, are you guys... Asher just hair flips at him. <laughs> <laughs> Prouty, starts, Prouty starts poking around at the rocks he's trying to break. He's just like, he's just kind of like, what's what's going on here? Huh? 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 He goes, do you know what um, he's saying? He's trying to say to me, he's, uh, the person says to you guys uh, regarding Prouty. Um, yeah, what are you doing? What's going on? Are you Alu? I live here. That's not the question. Uh, are you Alu? I am. There was a pause, though. Cool, cool. Um, <laughs> wow. Does he say there was a pause, though? <laughs> yes. For for hilarity's sake, yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, um, he likes to narrate himself. So, Beta sent us. You you doing okay? <laughs> I am I am okay as I bend down to pick up the rock that was thrown at me. <laughs> Gets him narrating himself now. <laughs> <laughs> What's this guy doing? Why is does anyone know why he's trying to break rocks? Questioning. I, I think he's, Who I are think these he's people? Possessed. I think Do he's possessed. <laughs> um I I cast main Cham and try to pull like one of the rocks and like or one of the things that he's mining just to see if there's anything that i could deduce from just looking at it yeah uh sure enough um and he doesn't seem to really care that you're doing that when you do it um and you bring the uh what color uh no never mind um that's i was thinking of a different spell um the the rock when you get it there's very faint markings from the tool he was using so doesn't okay. it's what Ash Ashwin said uh, checks out like he was doing a very shitty job at trying to break it, um, and it's just similar to the other rocks in there. Uh, so yeah, that's so. now that we're closer. Can um, I look around to see if anything looks odd? Do you, you want to investigate? Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you want to perceive or investigate? Actually, like physically. Uh, look around or you just want to um i would rather well my investigate is not great but um now there's my perception so i'll investigate i'll kind of like walk around and sure kick some rocks kick kick rocks uh go ahead and roll that <laughs> uh, uh that's a 13 so you're kind of scanning this room and it's it's a pretty tall room it's about 60 feet high this this uh cave opening uh, and, uh, nothing's really sticking out to you. The rocks all look the same. Uh, yeah, it, I mean, uh, that's all you get from the room. Uh, yeah. Okay. Remind me, were we supposed to bring him back with us? So you're supposed to find out like what he was supposed to report. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, he didn't and was not responding to any th any sending spells or anything like that uh, so yeah you're just supposed to find what's up and rescue him if he needs rescuing uh, or uh, you know basically just see if he had a good re like if he's if he's clearly still doing something of use and he has a good reason well uh, he's not I agree um <laughs> Uh, yeah. Okay. We. I. I think. Uh. Orson, can you use that big old hand of yours to take him out of this cave and bring him with us? I feel like he's gonna not allow us. Do you say that out loud? Willingly. You say that uh, out loud. I, I'll say it like up to Orson, like whisper it to him. Okay. Yeah. Like. Yeah. I could just. I could just grab him. Like I don't. With have your to... actual. Okay. My actual <laughs> with your actual hand. hand. Why not? <laughs> when you... I don't know, your main well, hand is just so big. Well, you know, I also have other hands. So, okay. like, so he goes over to <laughs> <laughs> He goes over to him and it's like, all right, you're coming with us because this is not healthy. No, this is my home. Scared I am. He is. 
backing what? away. I am um, need to protect myself if need be. <laughs> Feeling apprehensive. <laughs> it's really hard to self narrate, man. Uh, you sound like a robot. <laughs> sound like Yoda. It's... Well, until I could speak a normal language, you're going to come with us. So he grabs him and just tries to pull him. Okay. Uh, <laughs> make a. He's not going to allow it. So go ahead and make uh, oh, no. a uh, grappling check. Uh, okay. And let me pull up here. Okay. Am I rolling a strength check? Yes, correct. Okay. Oh, okay. That is a 21. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, I don't recall what ties do with grappling, so let me check. Because he got a 21 dex save all right so as you're doing this um he starts to meld into something that he was not and he stops talking and he turns into a red gooey viscous substance uh, in your arms uh, <laughs> i told you to use that mage hand <laughs> and uh yeah he's uh basically super viscous and let me see the acid damage um bu -bu -bu. Yeah, everybody roll initiative. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, shoot. I got four. <laughs> uh, I got 18. a 24. Ooh. Wow. I have a 16. 18 for me. So, 18... Uh, Ryan, you said you had a 16? Mm-hmm. Okay. And that will happen on his turn. Oh, that's a real shitty roll. Okay. It's going to be a... Uh... So as it turns into this uh, ooze, you see when he when he uh, no longer is in doing uh, doing the impersonation of Alu, uh, you see the red of the ooze, and there's a little thin line, very thin line on the floor. I'm not going to make you roll a perception check uh, that goes back into the rocks, and as he's doing that, this line it seems like the rest of him kind of fills your arms. Uh, as he's transforming um and uh okay ash you are first um what would you like to do currently uh you see orson with a arm full of of oblex no oblex <laughs> yeah do we know name. Do, do we, okay do we all know what that means i doubt it i mean okay. uh if you want to make a no it's I okay mean, whatever you want I don't know. Do you, uh, can, roll, is in... can I roll a nature check? To... Oh, I'll, I'll wait until my turn. Uh, let's see. Let me pull up your sheet real quick, uh, Ashwin. So you have a rapier. I got a lot of weapons on me. <laughs> you can attack or you can hold your, um, hold your uh, action. Um, and... Uh, so when you go on your character sheet under actions, you can see uh, you yeah. have you always have an action and a bonus action um, reaction, and you have movement, and you are real close uh, 
you're within one your movement speed essentially of the oblex so um you can what do you think ashwin would do well uh probably attack it but (laughs) we'll see how that works okay (laughs) (laughs) all right so go ahead and um make a uh attack roll roll a d20 and are you attacking it with your rapier yes okay so don't i have a like a plus something to that as well yeah let me look yeah plus two for dueling oh yeah it's already added into your attack action so when you Uh, look at rapier it's uh, 16 plus two it's actually plus if you roll the 16 it's plus seven because you add your proficiency and your um decks so uh we'll definitely hit regardless um and uh you know uh roll your damage on that which is 1d8 plus six seven pardon me Uh, i rolled a seven okay seven so you see this two foot tall mouse person spring into action quite uh impressively and deftly as it rips into the red viscous flesh of the ooze and takes nihilist turns to the other two and says damn it that is adorable (laughs) (laughs) Um, okay so do you have a bonus action or anything else you'd like to do that was your action do you Uh, have two attacks on that i believe yeah i think i'll say just leave it at that for now um but do you have multi-attack as a fighter i think you do uh like i think i have two attacks per action yeah so go ahead and roll another uh attack again with your rapier and let's do the d20 and the see where that goes so I rolled an eight this time. So plus, what was your bonus to hit is plus seven, so 15. And yes, that still hits, so roll, roll your damage. Uh, a six. Okay, six. All right. That's a uh, six plus six though, right? Seven, I think she said her first was... Uh... Her first hit was uh, seven damage. The damage? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is a plus seven for damage? The first attack she did was seven damage, and then this uh-huh. one was six. Oh, okay. Uh, I believe is what I heard. So, uh, yeah. Yes. Cool. Oh, I thought she had an attack uh, modifier plus six. That's what I was asking. Oh. Oh, yeah. Were you adding... Oh, good call. Thank you for... Um... No, those are just the rolls. Oh, okay. So, so the first one should have 12. been 13? So I'm going to add 12. So the first one should have been 13 then, because she rolled it 7. Correct. Okay. Yeah, we're getting to cool, the same cool, point, cool. just with different uh, different math. Uh, okay, cool. So, Dave, it is your turn. What would you like to do? Hmm, good question. If I use like Eldritch Blast, am I gonna blast uh Orson? It's possible. I think it's logical to say that while he's holding on to the ooze yeah. that uh Orson would n- not interpose his body with in between you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I think he's unless you think he would, then please um Yeah, I'm trying to think of um what I could do I think I'm going to cast oh, let's see I'm going to cast infestation uh, I'll probably have the same effect uh, I mean it, sa- it says it only appears on one but I guess they could crawl off and crawl onto Orson um, um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to cause the the ooze monster to to roll a constitution save so that's basically all i'm trying to do okay let me look up the spell con save it's a con 13 
he passes. Is that a okay. s- save or miss or what? Um, does anything happen on a pass? Uh, the target must succeed on a constitution saving throw or it takes 1d6 poison damage and moves 5 feet in the random, random direction. Uh, okay. Yeah, so this movement, nothing. yeah, nothing. Okay. Yeah. Um, no, so I, yeah, that's it for me. I'm just going to stay where I am and and uh, that's my turn. Okay. Um, all right. So it is Ryan's turn. Ryan, what would you like to do as you're grappling? Um, I would like to cast Polymorph. So it turns. Cool. So I turn lose into a sheep. Okay. What What's the save on that? Or is there? Um... Uh, let's see. So Polymorph. So wisdom. Is a wisdom save. Um, in my case, wisdom fifteen. Okay. You rolled a three, so <laughs> you see the old wow sheep polymorph uh, on this ooze. Suddenly, there's a sheep. What? What? Describe the sheep if it looks a certain way, or if it's just a normal white sheep. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this. Oh my god. <laughs> That's adorable. It looks, now it looks like this. Yeah, there's. Uh oh, Ashwin. <laughs> Competition. I am, I am comfortable in my own position. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like the 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 holder of the bronze medal for cuteness is not comfortable. <laughs> uh, cool. So you have a sheep, and I believe it's just it has the same. Uh, yeah, it's got like. It's got like, uh, you know, hit points of like two now or something. Right. Uh, yeah, like the same stats as a sheep. So it just has to remain alive for the rest of our adventures. Otherwise, it'll turn back into. <laughs> it's like an hour. Is that correct, uh, Ryan? I think it's an uh, hour. Oh, uh, okay. And... So we just have to not attack it at this point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So there's a sheep, and um, it just acts like a sheep now or does. Um, whatever sheep do i have to it has the intelligence of a sheep yeah okay yeah, yeah. so that's a big drop off for this thing um okay so can we just kind of like what do we want to do now do i want to continue looking around try to figure yeah, out how this I might mean, turn into a, a glob yeah it's completely <laughs> it's basically neutralized as far as i'm concerned yeah mm-hmm. yep uh okay so uh the rest of the room um why don't you guys make a nature or some sort of intelligence check, whatever you like, what, uh, and to see if you know anything about this ooze. About the ooze, okay. If you're proficient in any of the intelligences, then, uh, yeah. Yeah, I... God damn it. I got a 12 in insight. I got a 6 in arcana. I don't think insights intelligence base is it. Oh, sorry. I'll just say investigation twelve. Okay. Um, I have a sixteen in nature. Okay. Uh, what Nihilus, You said something bad. Six in Arcana. Okay. Uh, Ashwin, do you are you proficient in any intelligence based things? No, so I just rolled a fifteen. Okay. Um, <laughs> That's pretty good. So, uh, Orson. You know, um, and actually, since you've met this a creature like this before, um, Nihilus and Prodi, but I'm trying to remember if you figured out what it was. We did when? Uh, no, the, uh, on the beach with the gnomes. Yeah. How'd you know yeah. that? Did you guys figure it out? Like No, but they, 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 they like slunk away. We didn't fight them. Oh. Right. Right. Okay, okay, okay. They were just like, I don't quite feel right. <laughs> they just like <laughs> plug away. <laughs> um, yeah, they were the the people who were maybe you weren't there for that session, uh, Richard, but Oh, I was. I remember them. The yeah, so they were the I forgot that they turned into slugs and <laughs> left. Yeah, they were the kind of uh, lack of a better term uh they were weird yeah beach dwellers but they weren't <laughs> they weren't da- they didn't ever give you no they didn't do it they were good so. um oblexes yeah uh, that's why i was confused i was like we didn't fight one of these yeah things. so we'll say 
we'll say Orson and Nihilus and Prodi know what this is. And so basically they can absorb th people. And you guys did have a conversation with them, I think, at some mm -hmm. point. We, we talked to them, yeah. And they actually yeah, told they were, you... Like, freaked out about something. Yeah, they told you that they uh, were reformed Oblexes and stuff like that. I think that's coming back to me. Um, essentially, this Oblex absorbed Alu and um, uh, took on its... Made a simulacrum of Alu and... Um, it's about that time you hear some screaming through the cave. It's, you don't think it's coming from the cave, but it's it's a distant sound. Um, and uh, you think it may be coming from the town you were just in, walked through. Uh, so, yeah. Um, what would you like to do? We're out of head combat. Towards, we're out of initiative now. So Head towards the screams. Yeah, head towards the screams. Okay. It sounds like someone needs us. It sounds like, it sounds like someone's being taken advantage of. Uh, I don't like that. Yeah, the last time we didn't help anyone, I sold my soul. So for not for not even that much. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go help these people. <laughs> so you got that to look forward to. Um, uh, yeah, so you head out the cave and the sheep is like, when you leave, it's chewing on one of the rocks and it's doing a better job at breaking up the rocks than uh, the imperson <laughs> the uh, simulacrum of Alu was doing. It's going to be disappointed when it turns back into an Alu. <laughs> yeah. Um, or a human. So... You head outside the cave. Inquisitor Velov is... Uh, he's actually didn't know what that thing was and was a little freaked out. Uh, but you head back to uh, the town and there in the distance is a 20-foot tall... At first it looks like a rock golem of some sort. A creature just with rock sticking out of it. But the the sun is re refracting through the rocks and it's actually quite beautiful in terms of the colors it's it's sending off and um you're screaming and as you get closer you're people who are running for cover and um they're screaming troll and velov is uh is again <laughs> poor guy uh, he's going to get shit for this. Um, he doesn't know what it is. He's like, what? What in the world? <laughs> I thought you were a monster hunter. As you're running. As you're running. <laughs> yeah. I am sorry. <laughs> and he's like. Nihilus just like pushes him off to the side. Like, get oh. out of here. Um, I'm going to roll to see if something <laughs> happens with one of his daggers on his side. <laughs> To me? <laughs> no, no, like if he trips and then... Oh, okay. Oh my God. <laughs> you know that old saying, don't run with scissors? Um, sure. <laughs> you'd think a monster hunter would be more careful with his daggers. Uh, or no monsters. Right? <laughs> uh, so, yeah, he's fine. He just stumbles oh. and he continues running. And as you get closer, this, this crystalline troll is terrorizing the town and currently um so we're not so we're in a cave inside like, no no, no. With the town. you left the cave okay you exited yeah. the cave and so you're going you it. went back to the town you traveled through where the train dropped you off Got it. um and it is on the outskirts of town chasing people as trolls do um and yelling do any of you have speak giant or shard speak Nope. No. I think one of you has Eyes of the Rune Keeper, or not Eyes of the Rune Keeper, um, the invocation that allows you to... Maybe I was wrong. Maybe I looked at a different character from a different game. Let me check. Or I mean, I've speak have... animals, but I don't think that would be it. Yeah. Because um, there is an invocation. Maybe... Didn't... um. Aradia have that at the end? No. Uh, oh. <laughs> she thought she did it like level four. She thought she had speak all languages. Right. Um, 
Yeah, no, I think you just have read all languages, Orson. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. All right, so you don't know what it's saying. And um, we will... It's... Do you guys want to... You know, we'll pick up the next session because I want to do it with a better microphone in, in my own home. So um, we're going to leave it here and we'll pick up on episode 20 next week. Sorry for the slightly shortened session. We're about 10 minutes shorter than uh, I like to be. But uh, we will be back next week. And uh, I'd like to thank Lex and Ryan for joining us on this adventure. And hopefully they will be back next week. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, we will have another person joining us. And uh, we will all be the same size, fellows. the same size screens. Yeah, <laughs> maybe Dave. I don't even know. I've never had that many people in the Discord video. Nobody so. does. Come, <laughs> come back for that. See what happens with Discord. Uh, thank you for watching. Follow all of us on our socials, and um, the podcast will be up in a couple days, and the YouTube. And yeah, thank you so much for watching Venture Ventures, and be good to yourself, be good to others. Aww. And bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>